Damn. So hello to everybody who's live on Zoom. Hello to everybody who's live on Facebook. Hello to the people later on on Facebook. Hello to the people in Whova, if you're watching this when I post it to Whova. And hello to the people who are watching this on YouTube at the Fiddle Hell channel. That's youtube.com slash Fiddle Hell. So this is a wonderful chance to see and hear some of our Fiddle Hell instructors for the November Fiddle Hell Online, play some tunes and talk about their sessions, whether it's workshops or jams or perhaps concerts that they're planning for Fiddle Hell. So we've got a, a bunch of wonderful people, all of whom I think have pretty much been instructors at Fiddle Hell before. I don't think there's any uh, newbies here. So they know about what a great time it is. They can kind of tell you the stuff you need to know very succinctly in a few minutes. So without further ado, let me start by introducing somebody who is known for his New England fiddling, as well as nice variations and his wonderful tune writing, but for some reason isn't hanging out right now in New England. And that's Rodney Miller. I'll turn it over to you, Rodney. Thank you, Dave. Really appreciate being part of Fiddle Hell this fall. I was part of it last spring. It was an amazing event that you hold so many options for people to tune in and learn from. So um, let me start, I'll play a couple of tunes here, uh, New England tunes. And the first one is Lady of the Lake. And I know there are different versions of the Lady of the Lake. There's an old timey version and then there's more uh, of a New England uh, version, which is arpeggio driven. And uh, then I'll be going into an Irish tune that we use quite often as a medley tune because it's an A minor, Lady of the Lakes in G. And it makes a nice switch tune because it's uh, being Irish, it tends to be more linear and driving forward melodically. So I just, uh, in my New England jam session, we're going to cover quite a few uh, tunes in medleys. I'll provide the sheet music and some backup tracks, and uh, this will be part of uh, one of the medleys. So here we go with uh, Lady of the Lake and Sligo Maid. <laughs> Thank you. 
So um, I'll be doing also a, um, kind of a, a session on improv on fiddle tunes. And um, while I was playing a little bit around with the melody notes on those tunes, there was a lot going on with the bowing that I consider just as much improv as the actual note changing of a melody. So we'll talk about that because I was using some syncopated shuffling bowing patterns on the B part of uh, Lady of the Lake in particular. And then double stops here and there on the Sligo made to make it a little more interesting. Um, one of my sessions um, that I'm going to do is a, a more of an in-depth study on the fantastic fiddle tune of um, played by Benny Thomason. Um, and I'll be doing um, a breakdown of that. It's in an open D tuning, so a special fiddle tuning. And uh, talk about uh, Benny's recording of the tune, uh, Bonaparte's repeat, Retreat. And um, talk about how I picked it apart and played it. I think of all the versions, it was an early version by William Stepp back in the 30s that was uh, caught the eye of quite a few people in the opera world or in the uh, ba ballet world. And I'll talk more about the depth of the tune that way. But I think um, the fiddling of Benny Thomason took it to an art form on the tune. And I'd like to present that. Uh, in the meantime, and then I'm going to be doing a couple of tunes out of my new tune book. Um, and I'll just play uh, a tune called William Blake's Dead. It seems to have caught on in a number of fiddle circles already. It's in the key of D, and it's a reel. And uh, I composed this just a few years ago after watching a movie and wanting to write a movie theme to a Western. So um, this is uh, William Blake's Dead. Pretty much covers what I'll be doing uh, for my sessions on Fiddle Hell. I uh, hope you can join with me and uh, partake of it. We're going to slow some things down and others will be playing fast. So all different kinds of things happening. Okay, back to you, Dave. Great. Thanks so much. That was excellent to hear. And by the way, everybody listening to this, if you uh, go take a look at Rodney's website, which is mentioned in his bio, on my website and in Whova, you can see his wonderful new book, which I have a copy of on the music stand uh, nearby, and uh, take a look at uh, a bunch of his compositions. Thomas, as a banjo historian, has uh, been at a couple of fiddle hells, giving some really interesting talks about uh, some of them involve banjos, some of them are much broader in terms of uh, musical history and race and issues. and. Uh, I'd like to turn it over to you, Tony, to tell us what you'll be telling about. Okay, I'm giving a workshop entitled Black Music Sold as White Old Time Music, Race and Record the Recording Industry in the 1920s and er really early 30s, too. 
of probably one out of every 50 and probably much more of the records that were merchandised by the recording industry such as it was from the 1920 to 1931 as quote unquote white old time music actually had black musicians or much of it was completely black musicians but was merchandised uh, and sold as uh, as white music, uh, and and we're going to talk about this. Not uh, uh, just we're going to play a lot of this music. Some of the uh, more well-known music that uh, that, for example, that Jake is giving. Uh, uh, Jake Blount is giving a uh, workshop on the fiddling of uh, Jim Booker uh, with Taylor's Kentucky Boys, but Louis Armstrong and Jimmy Rogers. But even Lonnie Johnson, who was the most recorded blues musician of the 20th century, started making records in 1920. And he uh, stopped, he had a brief intermission, but he stopped making records in, in the 60s and 70s. And he was still charting records in the 50s, uh, besides making a number of blues fiddle records, because his first instrument was a fiddle, uh, was on three or four records that the record company issued uh, as a White Hillbilly uh, uh, records. Howard Armstrong, who many of us are familiar because he lived into the 90s and early 2000s and performed and his Tennessee Chocolate Drops, uh, a number of records that they made were issued as White Hillbilly records. It's a whole uh, uh, so far, uh, people I know, ma mainly Patrick Huber, but others have identified about uh, uh, more than 100 uh, uh, recordings of, of this type. And we're going to talk about it, but we're mainly going to play some of this music and talk about it. And I have even found some music, I haven't got my hands on the recordings yet, that the one black, the Black Swan Record Country, the supposedly black record company that was going to have all black musicians issued as black music of a white jazz band. So it was going around in different ways, and we're going to talk about it, and we're going to talk about, about how racism and other things had to do with black old time music white old time music and the other musics that were going on. But we're mainly going to play music and talk about it because these questions come up in a lot of the workshops I'm giving on black old time music on the banjo and stuff. And it's just the reality is always more interesting than what people think, including what I thought. I learned a lot and, and this will be interesting. You'll find out about new uh, music and even though I'm involved, there's almost no banjos involved and a lot of fiddling, a lot of mandolin playing, but only on one, I think on one recording that we'll play, will there be any banjos? Excellent. I'll be, I'll be looking forward to that because uh, I've enjoyed the, uh, the previous ones and it's really taking us back and understanding why some things happened in, in some new way that really people don't know about. Well, I, I have found myself as somebody who used to train people how to do research is that there's so many assumptions that all of us have about old time music or stuff that are just assumptions that because so and so said that, and then you sit down and you find out about it and you know, uh, a great man once said, theory is gray, but life is green. And it's, I don't want to have me talking and analyzing too much. And we're going to be listening to, to music and talking about some of the music uh, and, and ways to find the music. But the, the story, the, what happens, how it happens, always more interested uh, uh, than what we think about it or the general, you know, when people don't have time to research something, what they figure out. And this will be interesting. Great, looking forward to it. So now let me move uh, back to Julie Lyon Lieberman. <laughs> uh, again, I was uh, looking at your Wikipedia article, but I think I first uh, came in contact with Julie through uh, 
seeing some of her prolific set of books that are out there in terms of different styles. And she's the, uh, the power behind uh, Strings Without Boundaries. She might even mention where that's going these days. She's uh, great at improv and teaching it. And we're really happy to have her back. I don't know, maybe the fifth time or sixth time at Fiddle Hell. Not, it not quite feels sure. like the hundredth time happily. <laughs> <laughs> so over to you. Thank you, Dave. It's always a pleasure to participate in Fiddle Hell. And uh, when you sign up for Fiddle Hell, you get a whole lot more than amazing instructors. You join an incredible community of musicians for life. And that, particularly nowadays, after all of the seclusion we have experienced, becomes very, even more important in our lives. I'm going to be doing a session on Friday, November 4th at 7 p.m., right after dinner, uh, on focused on Claude Fiddler Williams. I had the great honor of producing him in solo concert for his first time in New York City. And I will be sharing some of the incredible escapades I had with Claude over the decades, as well as um, his amazing music. For those of you who read my memoir, The Roaring Brook Fiddler, you already know that my very first of my 14 books was inspired by Claude's solo on Hootie Blues with Jay McShann, uh, Sackville recording from Canada. And uh, that, that really inspired the Blues Fiddle book. I'm going to be also providing you with a copy of a solo that he took at my, I think it was my third jazz string summit in New York City. Uh, on There Will Never Be Another You. So I'll give you a backing track for the tune, a copy of the tune itself, and a copy of his solo on it. I'm not going to teach the entire solo. It is a challenging solo, but I more want to focus on his approach to playing on the tune and see where that takes you in your own uh, ideas about improvisation, about playing on chord changes, and about creating a melody of your own when you're soloing, which Claude was so amazing at doing, and you'll hear in, in a moment. But so if you're not familiar with There Will Never Be Another You, I'm going to give you a little round of the, of the melody. And then I will solo a little bit and then we'll go on to hear what Claude did with it. One of many souls he took on it, obviously. <laughs>
I know that track kind of ends before the tune is over, but um, coming up is Claude's solo on this, and I'll just set the scene for a moment here. We were in St. Peter's Church, the Jazz Church of New York City. Paul Simon was in the audience. We, we made it into Friday New York Times uh, weekend section. We had standing room only, and John Blake Jr. was there. He performed. El Shankar was there. I'm trying to remember all the people. Leroy Jenkins. I mean, there was a Matt Glazer. There was a whole whole bunch of amazing players that that for that concert. Just about no one in that hall had ever heard Claude. And after he finished his set. I ran downstairs into the green room to get something or other um, during while well, everything was being changed over for El Shankar. And I found John Blake Jr. in one corner of the room, Mac Glazer in another corner, and there was someone else in another corner, and each one of them is hunched over. And, and I'm like, what are you guys doing? You've already performed. We're trying to figure out what in the world he just played. We're trying to hold on to it before we forget what he did. Everyone was so electrified, and fortunately, uh, his performance was recorded, and it is up on my website in my archive section, as um, you'll also find on julieline.com, some interview material from uh, my NPR series, which I actually included him in both of my NPR shows. Um, all right, so that is Friday, November 4th. I'm playing in the gala Saturday night concert. Looking forward to that very much. And on Sunday morning, don't be afraid. It's at 10 a.m., but that's daylight savings time, so it's only like a little smidgen into the time change, so it's really 11. Um, so you'll get a good night's sleep. Um, that session, Ingredients for Success, where we're going to look at how you personally define success, musical success, and whether or not that definition serves you in your life. What does that do to you emotionally, psychologically? Um, what happens when you hear someone who you wish you sounded like? Uh, how do you take that in? Does it inspire you or does it make you feel bad? Um, are there technical problems that you avoid dealing with? Are, do you have difficulty allocating time to practice? So we're looking at what you want to achieve in your life on your instrument and how you've been going about doing that, the ways in which that propels you forward and the ways that that might be stopping you. And um, I'm hoping that during that session, you will have some really wonderful aha moments and that that will further your passionate love affair with music. So that's, that's, my, uh, that's my participation in Fiddle Hell and many thanks again to the Reiner family. That's great. By the way, the uh, Claude Williams workshop, I think you said Friday, is actually on Thursday. Oh, um, yeah. sorry about that. Thursday at yeah. 7 p.m. Thank course, you for that correction. Yeah, in the old days we had Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then we added Thursday so we could just pack it all in. I'll do it Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, Thursday night. <laughs> sure, and uh, um, let me introduce Tom Morley from uh, down in Alabama. He's been to quite a few fiddle hells and one of the things that he's known for is not just being an Irish fiddler, but being able to lead slow jams. So these are appropriate for beginners. They're great for people who are just learning some of the tunes and they're not a bad refresher at whatever level you happen to be. So uh, Tom, let me turn it over to you to talk a bit about it. Thanks, Dave. Um, and uh, I lived in Alabama for so long that I don't blame you for saying that that's where I was. I live in Chattanooga, Tennessee over the last four years and uh, enjoy. Yeah, you knew that, but that's okay. Uh, I did live in uh, Fairhope, Alabama for a very long time. So uh, loving it here in uh, the beautiful state of Tennessee and uh, been given lots of lessons and Zoom things and doing so many things uh, from right here 
in, in Chattanooga. And uh, yes, indeed, I will be doing another Irish Slow Jam on Thursday, November 4th at 1 p.m. Uh, so excited to be doing that uh, since 2013 when I've been uh, uh, one of the instructors with Fiddle Hell, first live and in person, and over the past two years uh, uh, virtually. Um, that does seem to have become, have become one of my specialties. And I've always enjoyed, I remember us talking early on in uh, um, my, our connection, how I never mind slowing a tune down, finding a great way to play it slowly and make sure everybody can play along and uh, finding the beauty in these great Irish trad tunes uh, at any tempo, really. And uh, uh, since the uh, pandemic, since March 2020, I have uh, actually uh, made quite a, a name for doing that, just a little cross-promotion. Uh, I've been doing my own Monday play-alongs on Facebook. Uh, tomorrow I'll be doing the 74th Monday, and the week after that, celebrating my 75th anniversary of doing those. So I've had a lot of practice in, in teaching and, and leading people in nice, slow tunes. Uh, I have a fun technique, particularly on Zoom, where uh, I actually let the... Uh, the participants help me set the tempo so that everybody is really happy and nobody ever gets left behind. I, I start, um, I don't officially start a tune until I play the first three or four bars and say, what do we think of that? And, and get some feedback from the participants before we officially start the tune. So that can be uh, really helpful. Uh, this time around, uh, I'm going to, uh, I have a really fun set of tunes uh, picked out all from the, uh, the two volumes of the 52 Trad Tune uh, uh, CDs that uh, a lot of my friends have the, that you guys put together there at Fiddle Hell. Uh, I'll have tunes on it like Calliope House, Drowsy Maggie, uh, The Butterfly, uh, The Cork Hornpipe, Haste to the Wedding. Uh, a lot of great tunes, uh, and it's all right there on my page there at uh, the uh, Fiddle Hell uh, online site. Everybody will know the tunes we're going to play. And like I said, they'll, they'll uh, log in and, and help me set those tempos, and we'll have a lot of fun with those tunes. Um, I'm going to play a couple tunes here for you. Um, I'll play a, kind of a version of a slow tune going into a faster version, just for, just for fun. But uh, just two days ago, I discovered a tune. I mean, we're always looking for tunes, you know, so many tunes, so little time. Uh, you will never run out. I was actually researching, looking for some other tunes. And I love tunes with dates. Everybody knows the 8th of January, and there's a great tune called the 28th of January, an old-time tune. There's also a tune called the 1st of May, which is usually played as an Irish hornpipe. Uh, and, uh, but two days ago, I found a tune called the 11th of October, <laughs> which I did not know existed before. It's a, it's a true tr uh, Irish uh, single reel that was first published in the Dance Music of Ireland in 1873, so it's been around forever, but uh, I never saw it. But it's a great little tune, and I have worked it up. I have to share it with everybody since tomorrow is the 11th of October, and it even has a little quote of Devil's Dream. You don't usually hear any of that famous tune that seems to stand alone, yet you'll hear a little bit of that in the B section, and I wonder if there's any connection there. Uh, I can't find that out. But anyway, here's a, a, a merry little Irish reel in the key of A, the uh, 11th of October. <laughs> Anybody's familiar with that tune, the 11th of October, but it, uh, it's really going to stick with me, and it was one of my new favorites. Uh, anyway, let me play just a little bit. I was uh, telling Dave earlier it's no fun to play a slow tune unless there's a bunch of people actually playing along, so I won't really do that, but I thought I'd take Swinging on a Gate, start it out nice and slow, and then go ahead and speed it up into a traditional kind of tempo. 
Uh, but once again, I think my uh, students who follow me on, fate, on, uh, on Fiddle Hell will have a lot of fun playing these tunes with me slow. So I would do... <laughs> Folks out there who are looking for tunes to play nice and slow, to work on their ear training, to work on their fingering, read them off music, however they're doing it, or to learn more tunes off the 52 uh, tune volumes, I hope they'll uh, join me for my slow session. And of course they can sign up at fiddlehell.org. So I hope you all will do that. Thanks once again, Dave, for having me as part of uh, this new Fiddle Hell. You're like your clairvoyant to have thought decided to do it once again virtually. I, I don't know how you knew, but I think that was the, the best, safest way to go this November. So, yay. Thank you, Tom. Thanks. That's great. Um, actually, starting <laughs> in 2022, uh, it turns out that we're going to uh, run one face-to-face -face Fiddle Hell. That'll be November of 2022, and hopefully every November after that. And also one online for the people who can't get to the face-to-face -face one, and that'll probably be uh, in the April, so there'll be probably two a year. That'll work out. Uh, a couple of very quick announcements before I talk about my workshops. Um, one is, if you want to get a t-shirt in time for Fiddle Hell, order it tomorrow, because those are closing on the website. It's a virtual exhibit that you can get to it. It's also posted uh, in uh, the Fiddle Hell, Massachusetts Facebook group. Early bird tickets are on sale till October 20th. Tell all your friends, because if you uh, sign up by October 20th, not only do you get 10% early bird discount, but you'll get a chance at winning the inlaid fiddle, which actually I'll play for you in a moment. Uh, so tell your friends, we'd, we'd like to get some more people there. You can all have front row seats at Fiddle Hell. Now, I've taught a couple of workshops in the past at Fiddle Hell on chords and understanding chords and bowing patterns and learning by ear. And rather than repeat those each time, I just posted them from uh, the last Fiddle Hell online. They're up on Whova now, which is our platform for uh, going to live sessions and doing replays. So if you're signed up for Fiddle Hell already, you can go replay those now. So I don't have to uh, teach the same thing again, but I am kind of premiering a new one on bowing and it's called basic bowing shuffles for fiddlers. And so it's basically level one and level two. So beginning and low intermediate, it's not going to be too fast, but we're going to concentrate on a couple of techniques that really help with fiddling across different styles things like mid bow pulses, certain patterns like the middle shuffle, Nashville shuffle, perhaps a bit of Georgia shuffle. And these actually do quite a lot to bring the tunes alive and uh, get you away from just playing a sequence of notes. They add expression to it. Let me just pick up a fiddle here. Nice looking fiddle. 
We're uh, drawing for this at the end of October and announcing at Fiddle Hill itself who has won the fiddle and the new carbon fiber bow in the case. So if you signed up early, you had three chances, a little later, two chances, but still, if you sign up by October 20th, you still get a chance to win this. So if you take a very, very simple tune like uh, Waving for the Federals, Seneca Square Dance, kind of not very exciting, but if you add a little bit more double stopping, mid bow pulses, bow rocking. And turning into is really adding more to the bow and layering a bunch of techniques together. So we'll do that. We'll also do a scale with an extra note. And we'll use that to practice a couple of the bowing shuffles so you can get used to them. And then we'll take some common tunes. I'm not gonna be teaching tunes, but we'll take some common tunes like Angeline the Baker, for example, or Bile Them Cabbage Down, and apply some of these new bowing techniques. So again, when I teach bowing, sometimes I throw too much in there, but this one is gonna be more beginning, low intermediate. We're gonna concentrate on fewer techniques and really helping you get them solid. And the bowing one that's already on there, that's a little bit more advanced. Uh, I'll also have a handout uh, in November that shows you some of the bowing patterns and what they're called, which is very useful. At any rate, nice resonant inlaid fiddle. Uh, it's still getting used to being played again. I hadn't played it in a little while, but I've had it for a while. Uh, so I hope to see you at that particular uh, session. Now, there are a couple people who are coming live next Sunday night. That's October 17th, same time, 8 p.m. Eastern, and also October 24th. And you can hear more people talk about their sessions. And by the way, if you're an early bird, you can also come to Andy Reiner's uh, pre-fiddle hell party on November 3rd. And I have no idea what's going to happen there. That's going to be online and should be amazing. So uh, I think Andy may be watching this. Maybe he'll be able to uh, say a little bit about it. Maybe not. But uh, that's, that's certainly worth doing. But there are also some people who have recorded previews and they're just short previews. They play a bit of a tune and they talk about what they're doing. Uh, people like April Virch and uh, with her husband, Cody Walters and Natalie Haas. And I just got one today from uh, Calvin Volrath. So I thought we'd kind of end this session today and I'll play a couple of those for you. They're short and they're interesting. If you want to hear the whole set of all these previews, they're at our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash fiddlehell. And it's the first set of previews that uh, you can find on there.